A pair of mischievous high school kids create the illusion of a haunting on an unsuspecting elderly neighbor while keeping his every reaction under surveillance. Welcome back to Movies Explained, today's film is a mystery drama from 2016 titled, The Good Neighbor. September 18, 2014, a high school student named Ethan Fleming is explaining the terms and conditions of an experiment he's going to conduct. The hypothesis they're trying to prove is that they can drive an unsuspecting subject into believing that they're haunted only by altering their perception. There will be no physical interference, only electronic and mechanical equipment will be used in the experiment. They have six weeks to prove the hypothesis which will be done objectively, with no trick editing or false narrative. Their subject is Ethan's neighbor Harold Graney, who he dubs a creepy psycho hermit. Something strange might be going on in the house and they're going to document the entire thing. This includes filming Ethan's partner for the experiment, Sean Turner, as they go shopping for the equipment they need. Sean is really smart and tech savvy, he explains all the equipment that will be used in Ethan's bedroom, which will serve as the surveillance room. They're using small cameras and audio bugs that connect to the internet to collect real-time video and audio feeds. The boys also set up surveillance cameras inside Ethan's room so they have footage of themselves conducting the experiment. All cameras can zoom in and are equipped with night vision. Sean sets up more cameras outside Ethan's house before they break into Harold's house as he leaves to go grocery shopping. He sets up a camera in the living room while Ethan roams the house, seeing a padlocked basement door before Harold's cat surprises him. They also set up devices that will be used to trick Harold into believing he is haunted, such as remotely controlling his lights. Sean is concerned that the cameras aren't well hidden enough, but Ethan assures him that everything is fine. The scene shifts to the aftermath of their project, as a lawyer presents the surveillance camera footage from the living room as evidence in court. She claims that the living room camera captured the tragic moment in Harold's home. Back in the project, during the first night of the experiment, Ethan and Sean invite their friends into Ethan's room to talk about their so-called haunting project. The boys justified picking Harold as their subject because he's a grumpy alcoholic who had supposedly beaten his wife until she finally left him. He also apparently likes to stand in front of his windows to watch his neighbors. The boys are planning the first scare tactic for their experiment, which is to make the lights flicker while Harold is watching TV in the evening. He seems merely confused at first but continues on to watch TV as the electricity returns to normal. Later in the night, the boys mess with the electricity again before fully shutting it off. Harold is seen walking to the fuse box and banging at it, but a knock on his front door prompts him to go open it. The electrical disturbance had triggered Harold's security alarm, which he claims hasn't worked in 15 years. The officer wants to come in and see if everything is all right, but Harold refuses to let him in. Meanwhile, the boys are panicking because they don't have an audio feed of the porch, but they believe that their electric disturbance may have prompted the cops to respond. In the courtroom, police officer Christopher Palmer testifies as the first responder to the tragedy, stating that he discovered the defendant standing over a body covered in blood in Harold's living room. The morning after Officer Palmer showed up, they see a woman knocking on Harold's door. However, he pretends not to be home, so she gives up and drops the files she wants him to sign in front of the door. After she leaves, Harold picks them up before ripping them and throwing them in the trash. The boys wonder if she's Harold's ex-wife. They also see Harold having an altercation with a neighbor, threatening to mutilate his dog if it goes into Harold's property again. That afternoon, the boys start their second scare tactic, which is to control the back door and make it slam repeatedly on its own. Harold just watches the door, having a flashback of his ex-wife who used to bang on the door similarly because it won't stay closed. She seemed to be frustrated at his lack of involvement or help in the house. He snaps out of his flashback and sits down in his living room. Later in the evening, the boys start banging on the door again, which wakes Harold up from his sleep. The boys are confused as to why he doesn't seem scared about the door, but this time, Harold takes an axe and completely destroys the door. The boys are freaked out, especially Sean who thinks that Harold knows about their experiment. When Harold walks away from the camera with the axe, they begin to panic when they hear Ethan's door banging and cautiously approach the front door. Once the banging stops, they go outside and Sean is ambushed by someone. It turns out to be his own father who scolds him for not spending the only day out of the week he has with Sean. The next day, 
Ethan reports that Harold has broken his schedule because he didn't come out of his house like usual. Since Harold's behavior seems to be affected, Ethan deems the experiment to be successful so far. Sean then joins Ethan's family for dinner because his mother is working late and his father is divorced and lives elsewhere. Sean seems to be wary of continuing the experiment, but he and Ethan move on to the next scare tactic which is to turn on Harold's record player in the middle of the night. This also makes Harold have a flashback of his ex-wife listening to the same song and dancing in the middle of the night. She's very drunk and clearly upset at something that has to do with their marriage. Once again, he doesn't react much, but later that night, Harold enters his locked basement. Ethan thinks that he's hiding something down there because Harold doesn't even lock his front doors yet he padlocks his basement. The boys find that Harold spent the entire night down in the basement. Their next scare tactic is to simulate cold spots by killing the thermostat in Harold's house. Sean has applied chemicals over the windows to cause them to crack in the cold. They're trying to decipher what Harold was saying in his sleep before Ethan's mom barges into the room to scold her son. In the court trial, she stands as a witness as the prosecutor questions how she didn't have a clue about the boy's experiment. She says that it made sense that Sean's father bought his son the expensive computers and she would rather Ethan spend hours with his good friend in his own room than get into trouble outside the house. It's also revealed that she was scolding Ethan that night because he had gone through her closet which is where she kept her ex-husband's gun. Back in the present, the boys witness Harold being woken up by the sounds of the windows cracking as his house gets colder. He tries to increase the temperature but the thermostat immediately lowers it again as the window in his bedroom shatters. Defeated, he walks back to his bedroom where he has a flashback of meeting a young woman on a cold snowy day. She tells him that his wife would be home soon and she was afraid they won't make it. After the flashback, he combs his hair and proceeds to sit on the bed for hours in the cold before going down into the basement before dawn. In the morning, Ethan concludes that their hauntings and Harold's basement are somehow connected. Sean thinks that it's weird because Harold never seemed scared despite everything they did to the house. Finally, Harold comes out of the basement which prompts Ethan to suggest that they go down there when Harold leaves the house. Sean doesn't agree with Ethan's plan, but they eventually agree to call the cops to report a crime in the basement. To prepare for the call, Ethan sneaks to Harold's front porch to plant a bug so they can listen in to the cops' conversation later. That night, they leave an anonymous tip to the police which prompts them to send Officer Christopher to Harold's house at midnight. He tells Harold that they received a noise complaint from his neighbor who heard a woman screaming in his basement while walking his dog. He lets the officer enter the basement and look around, but he finds nothing out of the ordinary and leaves the house. The boys still think that Harold is hiding something, and Ethan insists on going down there themselves. Sean thinks that it's going to ruin their project and get them into trouble with the law. The boys argue, and Sean mentions that he knows about something that happened between Harold and Ethan's dad. In court, it's Sean's turn to get questioned by the prosecutor. After the clip, she asks what they talked about off camera, and Sean says that Ethan told him the truth about what happened to his father. The prosecutor elaborates that Ethan's dad used to argue a lot with Ethan's mom, and one day, their argument turned physical which led to her running to Harold's house for help. Harold had intervened in their fight and his testimony led to Ethan's dad's arrest that night. He had also talked to Ethan's mom the whole night which seemed to convince her to file for a divorce. However, Sean discovered this by accidentally reading an email from Ethan's father, which paints Harold as the bad guy who took away Ethan's father. The prosecutor thinks that it's a motive to try and harm Harold, but Sean insists that it was only supposed to be an experiment. The boys and their friends are having a Halloween party in Ethan's house. Ethan urges Sean to have fun with a girl in the guest room, but it turns out that he had set up a camera there and watched the two as they made out. However, the girl notices the camera and Sean confronts Ethan about it. Ethan says that he was only trying to see if Sean would say something about the project, but Sean has had enough of everything and doesn't want to continue the project anymore. Ethan starts threatening Sean, saying that all the cameras can be traced back to his father's credit card and that they're in this together no matter what happens. Harold leaves the basement unlocked one morning before going outside to repair some holes in the driveway, which Ethan notices. Later, Sean enters Ethan's room, and after Ethan apologizes, he wants all of his equipment returned. Suddenly, the cat is pawing at one of the cameras, causing it to fall over. Ethan wants to break into Harold's house while he's sleeping, 
to retrieve the cameras, which Sean strongly opposes. Ethan is adamant about breaking in and wants Sean to text him if Harold wakes up. He sneaks through the back door and starts making his way through the house when Sean notices that he's bringing a gun with him. He takes the fallen camera but then moves to the open basement door and walks downstairs. He finds some medical equipment and a bell, which makes noise, waking Harold up. Sean alerts Ethan who places the bell in the living room before returning the basement's padlock to its place. He then runs and hides under a table while Harold roams his house. Harold seems to notice the misplaced bell and goes to take his gun. Sean alerts Ethan once more, who starts to aim at the man as he stands in front of the bell. Suddenly, Harold points the gun to his head and pulls the trigger. Sean panics and runs into the house, confronting Ethan about them killing Harold. In a hurry, they begin to remove all the cameras. As the two try to move the body, Officer Christopher walks in and arrests them. In a series of flashbacks, we see that Harold turned out to be a loving husband whose wife Caroline, was very sick for a long time and was taken care of in their home. He gave her the bell so that she can call him without having to spend too much of her energy. After Caroline died, he put everything that has to do with her down in the basement. That's why he often comes down there, to reminisce in her memories. During the trial, Ethan and Sean's lawyer is questioning the old woman who turns out to be Harold and his wife's friend. She says that Harold refused to go to a senior's home that she found for him because he thought that Caroline's spirit is still in the house. In the end, the judge says that their actions, regardless of their intentions, led to Harold's death. However, he can only sentence them to two years of probation for illegal surveillance and breaking and entering as minors with no prior criminal record. The movie ends with Ethan seeming pleased with all the infamy he has now gained. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos.